In today's video, I want to walk you through how to create, cut, and design your own vinyl wrap. The amazing thing about vinyl wraps is that you can use them on a glass tumbler on their own or on a glitter tumbler like I'm going to show you here. Either way, wherever you put this, the process is going to be the same. Before we get into it, make sure you are subscribed if you like all things crafty and you want to learn how to build your handmade business so you can keep bringing in consistent sales. In this video today, we are going to be using Silhouette Studio and some images I got on Etsy to design and create and apply a vinyl wrap on a glitter tumbler. Again, you can use this process with whatever software that you use, although I fully 1000% recommend that whether you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, you should be using Silhouette Studio for your designs. So I'm going to walk you through it and answer hopefully all of the questions that you have, but if anything comes up, make sure you leave me a comment so I can help you there as well. And as always, if you are interested in making glitter tumblers or learning more about making glitter tumblers, check out my course that I've linked underneath this video that's going to take you to from beginner to pro in a matter of days. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we have to do is make our tumbler. If you're using like a glass can or an already kind of colored tumbler, this is something you can skip, but I wanted to go through this pretty quickly just in case you are interested in doing this on a glitter tumbler. I'm mixing up my own base paint with universal white and reg pigment from the Crystal Act Company. I love this base paint and the ability to customize and create all of my own unique colors. So I did two coats of that and then I'm going to apply some glitter from Glitzy Creations onto my tumbler using the Crystal Act glitter glue. After you get your glitter on, you're gonna go through the process of getting it completely smooth because you really don't wanna put on your vinyl unless you have a completely smooth the surface. So again, if you're interested in learning how to make glitter tumblers, I have a course ready for you in the comments or in the description underneath this video. But once you have your tumbler ready and smooth, you're going to grab the SVGs you're trying to use and likely clean them up. So I got these SVGs um, from Etsy and you can see that they're like in a million different pieces. So there's a couple things that we need to do. I want to layer this vinyl, right? in as few layers as possible. So you can see me move this like face out of the way and all these pink dots are there. I have no idea why they're there. And unfortunately, more often than not, we have to clean up our SVGs. So I'm gonna go through and delete anything that I'm not going to be using. And the way I think about this is that I'm gonna start with a black layer and then I'm gonna put the white on top. So I don't need multiple layers of black. I just wanna um, cut the entire outline with black and then put the white on top. So I'm gonna use the subtract feature. I'm picking up right now, I am grabbing the black feet and the, the white um, face and I did subtract all and you can see me like, actually I still need those pieces so I didn't wanna delete them. That's a good reminder to always like make a copy before you really do anything. So you can see now that the background has those feet included and it's actually in three different pieces. So I'm gonna right click and weld and I'm not gonna actually need the face either because right now I'm gonna select the eyes and that black piece of the nose and then select the white outline of the face and hit subtract all. So now you can see when I delete the black pieces, it's just a hole in the white because then when you put it on top of black, it's gonna show through. So you're gonna have to clean it up a little bit by using the subtracting features, possibly the welding features to get this all ready to go. And then I'm gonna just align it middle and center. Um, I'll cut the black, I'll cut the white and I'll cut the red bow all separate. So if you wanna just make sure, you can see me align it center and middle and like that will be what it looks like when it's all layered. The next one I had to do is the bow that I downloaded. I want a solid black background, just one piece and then a pink layer to put on top. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I tried to weld it and you can see that like I can't weld it because I actually need to cut out the pieces from the pink bottom right there. You see that? So I'm gonna grab the two, um, well first I'm gonna make a copy because again, you always wanna have a copy to go back to. And in my copy over on the left, I'm gonna select all three of the black pieces 
and weld them together because that's what I want to be my background layer. So you can see how it's just one piece. But I don't want to weld the pink bow. So I, on my other copy, I need to take the top black part, the bow, and then one of the bottom like ribbon pieces and hit subtract all. It'll take away kind of like the bow and where it looks like it's overlapping. So I'm using the subtract feature to do that. So then I'm gonna combine these two pieces. I always like to group light colors and I always do that by doing Control G. If you're on a Mac, it would be Command G um, to get these all lined up where they need to go. And so it makes it easy to cut. So now I can cut one shape for the background and I'll cut one piece. I mean, it's multiple pieces, but I'll just cut like all the pink at one time, but it'll still look like it is overlapping, um, even though it's not really because I use those subtract features. So again, I'm gonna group that and then I'm gonna design the wrap. Now I start with a rectangle that is the size of my tumbler. So I, I measured the height of the tumbler and how you know far around it is to make this red rectangle. And then I'm just gonna play around with the sizes of everything and where things want to go. And you can see me on the right side using the align panel where I then can like move things around but then also make sure they're all lined up. So if I select two at a time and then align through the middle, I'll know that they all look nice. And then I just copy pasted that on the other side to make it nice and uniform. And that's what it's gonna look like after I cut it um, and put it on my tumbler. So I'm gonna start with the black here and get this all set in Silhouette Studio to cut. Again, you can also use this in, uh, you know, in Cricut Design Space, but I really just, Silhouette is so much better, but even designing it in Silhouette Studio and then uploading it into Cricut Design Space um, will help. So I am, I, you can see that I'm in the, the line panel up on the top right, like it says fill, line, um, I like to cut by line. So I select all of the black pieces and you can see them kind of highlight. That's why I zoomed in here, like they're highlighted. So you know that that's what's gonna cut. And I'm gonna cut all of the black all at one time. And I'm gonna send it to my silhouette. And before I actually get into this, I had some trouble cutting my vinyl for this video. And I think that that happens way more often than people think. Like every video on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram is like these perfectly easy weeds, we have no issues. But I, that's just not realistic. I've had a silhouette since 2016 and I mess up and have issues all the time with my cut settings, with my weeding vinyl. Like it's just not a perfect process. So I left all of that in the video because I just want you to see what it's really like sometimes when you create these vinyl wraps or vinyl decals. While most of the time it works out great, there are always times that be become a little frustrating. So I want to walk through sort of how I dealt with these issues as they came up. So that's that. And I'm looking forward to showing you how to do this process so you can try it on your own. Okay, so you'll see how I sort of messed things up a little bit, but I went ahead and weeded out that rectangle. And then when I tried to remove it from my transfer sheet, I realized that I accidentally cut all the way through um, and through a lot of the bows, not all of them. So I decided, you know what, I'll just leave this here. I will take off the rest of this and I will use the remainder of my mat like underneath to cut the other colors. So I'm just gonna leave it here as I work on the others. And I went with white next, and you can see me move the face all the way kind of down to the bottom left because I'm going to put white vinyl on the bottom left corner of my cutting mat as I send it to my silhouette. So you can see here that it's on the bottom and then it's just gonna, I'm telling it to cut in that specific area and it's easy to weed out all of the white pieces. Now I did take this one off and then apply the pink down at the bottom as well and because my vinyl was like scrap vinyl, I had to do it in two different pieces but it's all good. I'm trying to use up the materials, you know, so we don't um, have to buy more. So what I did was copy and pasted the pink um, bows like section and moved it to the bottom where my vinyl would match it on my mat. And then I chose in that right panel to cut 
the pink lines. And then you'll see I accidentally put my transfer tape down um, over the word, the name Janice. So I had to cut that away. And it was just like a, it was a whole thing. You guys, it's, it's like going to get worse. So, but it, it all worked out in the end. So I then wanted to reverse weed because the bows had like those little, two little kind of dots in the bow design. So to reverse weed, you put your transfer tape on, peel off the backing and then peel away the rest of the vinyl because, and then it's ideally stuck to the transfer tape and to make it easier. So I tried to do this to save some of those little um, dots that I had in the bow and I like lost one. You can see me like hold, literally holding it on my finger right now. I'm trying to move them around with the tweezers. It was still like small and tough to hold on to those little bows. It wasn't until I put it on that I realized I lost more than I thought. So I ended up like, you can see me here, take a picture and send it to a crafty friend to be like, does it look okay? Um, so then I decided to take off that transfer tape in the middle and I had to fix the J. So on the next piece of the pink bows, I didn't bother. I just weeded like normal. And then I got rid of the little two little dot pieces um, because it was just easier that way. So I put those on one, um, you know, each side at a time, and then I have this whole design already layered and ready to go. So I put on a transfer sheet over all of it, and then I'm gonna transfer this whole thing to my tumbler. And again, I had to be extra careful because it was just a little more difficult because I accidentally cut all the way through the, the backing paper, which you're not supposed to do. So I had to be extra careful and a little bit more diligent with my squeegee tool to get it to transfer to this tape. But you can see it can be done and it's not always picture perfect. And this one was just an extra annoying thing. So I added it to my tumbler using my squeegee tool to get it nice and stuck, remove the transfer tape, and then you can finish this up. If it's just on a glass can tumbler, you don't have to do anything. But because this is a glitter tumbler, I do need to seal this up with a few more coats of my grand finale. If you wanna learn more about using grand finale to make tumblers, I'm gonna link a video on your screen, but you can also see that I, the backing paper stuck to my cutting mat, so I had to scrape it. This took me like 10 whole minutes just to scrape this clean, like it was so annoying, but I realized I hadn't cut the bow yet, so I had to do that to apply my red vinyl to cut the bow. Um, and I'm just gonna move the whole, oh, I just moved the bow. You can move the whole thing or the bow, but then I cut the red line because it's red, um, or by the fill line, and then I added that to my tumbler. So it's a process of love, and you're just gonna finish it up when you're done, whether it's glass or not. Again, I use Crystalette Grand Finale, so I'm gonna do a few coats to get it nice and smooth and shiny. I'm gonna clean up the insides and honestly start using it a couple days after I am done. So if you want more information on how to make tumblers, I'm gonna put a video up on your screen so you can get started making really fun glitter tumblers that are professional quality, really shiny, and super durable. So you can watch the video on your screen.